Thalassophobia, an enduring and intense fear of the sea, appears quite rational when one contemplates the mysterious and unsettling creatures that reside in its depths. The enigmatic nature of our planet's oceans only serves to magnify this fear. Yet, even beyond the vast oceans, seemingly innocuous bodies of water, like rivers, can conceal nightmarish inhabitants. In the summer of 2014, a fisherman experienced this firsthand. Canada boasts an impressive array of rivers, exceeding 8,000 in number, each with its own natural wonders. Among them, the Fraser River in British Columbia stands out for an unsettling reason. It has gained notoriety for being home to some of the largest sea creatures ever encountered, massive entities that could rival Liam Neeson in a brawl if they had legs. Swimming in these waters is not recommended, given the potential encounter with slimy, leg-nibbling creatures. Nevertheless, the Fraser River remains a popular fishing destination, attracting enthusiasts from far and wide. In 2011, Jeff Grimmelson, an avid fisherman, founded River Monster Adventures, offering tours of this renowned river. However, this group is not solely for entertainment. It plays a vital role in supporting local conservation efforts to protect the sturgeon population residing in these turbulent waters. After capturing these colossal fish, they tag and release them back into the river. Due to its unique attractions, this site draws tourists from all corners of the globe. In 2012, a British couple named Margaret and Michael Snell embarked on a vacation to explore its mysteries. Little did they know what awaited them. While leisurely resting on their boat, the couple experienced a powerful tug on their fishing line, leading to a world record-breaking catch, an astonishing 12-foot-long fish. Two years later, the Fraser River would astound visitors once again. On Father's Day, Paul Jarvis and his father Ron embarked on a special trip to this renowned fishing spot. After hours of inactivity, they found themselves locked in a fierce battle with an unimaginably massive sturgeon, weighing an astonishing 90 zero pounds, equivalent to an average-sized adult male polar bear. Yet, the Fraser River concealed its most peculiar secret, hidden beneath its opaque surface, waiting for an intrepid soul to bring it to light. Enter Nick McCabe, a teenager who had taken a summer job as a guide at River Monster Adventures in 2014. Things had been going smoothly, but one day, he embarked on a boat with some friends, struggling to find any noteworthy catches. As they were about to call it a day and head home empty-handed, McCabe spotted an unmistakably gigantic presence beneath the calm river surface. He and his friends set their sights on it, trailing it in the boat with bated breath. McCabe later recounted the moment when he realized he was in for something extraordinary. The fish jumped right out of the river and I said, well, that looks like a 10-footer, so strap on, we're going to be into at least a two-hour fight. The battle turned out to be even more intense, a grueling two hours and 15 minutes. Whatever they were grappling with possessed unimaginable strength, and McCabe's preference for shorter fishing lines only added to the challenge. Soon, the pieces of this extraordinary puzzle would start falling into place. After hours of grueling physical and mental endurance, McCabe and his companions finally succeeded in reeling in their colossal catch. When the creature emerged from the water, their shock ran deep. This was no ordinary sturgeon. It appeared more monstrous than fish-like. Its elongated and oddly shaped snout resembled none other than that of a pig. They soon learned that this fish had a notorious reputation. McCabe quickly discovered that he had captured a local legend, given the name Pig Nose. Pig Nose's unique appearance was the result of a tragedy that occurred 40 years earlier. Fortunately, the peculiar creature had survived its wounds, but as they healed, they left him permanently deformed, resembling a barnyard animal rather than a river dweller. 40 years might seem like a long time, but it only represents half of Pig Nose's lengthy and storied life as the creature is believed to be at least 80 years old. At 10 feet long and weighing 650 pounds, he was still growing. Young and adventurous Nick McCabe became the first fisherman to ever catch this elusive creature. To commemorate this milestone, they took an affectionate picture together, transforming from foes to friends. McCabe initially thought that the local buzz surrounding Pig Nose's historic catch was fading away. However, a year after the legendary incident, something incredibly strange occurred. While cruising the waters on a scorching summer day, McCabe once again spotted something enormous lurking beneath the depths. 
An hour later, he had done the impossible. He had caught pig nose again. Following this remarkable twist of fate, McKay began to develop a unique bond with the gentle creature. He expressed, he might not be the largest fish in the river, but it's a very special fish for us. However, Fraser River is not the sole location where one can encounter strange and wondrous deep-sea denizens. In fact, wherever water flows, you can anticipate intrepid individuals on the hunt for their own aquatic mysteries. Sometimes their discoveries surpass even the wildest expectations. Nestled within the provinces of Van and Bitlis, Lake Van reigns as Turkey's largest body of water, perched over 5,000 feet above sea level. Its most intriguing characteristic, though, is its refusal to freeze due to high salinity, ensuring a year-round flow. However, this consistent condition has come at cost to the lake's biodiversity. Given the elevated salt levels, only one species of fish, the pearl mullet, is known to inhabit its brackish waters. Nevertheless, local legends persist about other creatures lurking beneath Lake Van's waves. For over a century, residents have reported sightings of a lake monster. Many of these claims were dismissed over time, but in 1997, Lunel Kozak managed to capture the creature on film. The video depicted a large, squid-like monster emerging from the water before gradually submerging, though the authenticity of the footage remains a subject of debate among scholars. Despite the uncertainty surrounding the creature's existence, it hasn't deterred archaeologists from venturing into the lake's depths. In a recent expedition, divers plumbed the lake's very bottom, unveiling a wholly unexpected revelation. On that particular day, a team of researchers from Van Yuzunkiyil University arrived at the lake's shores to investigate an age-old myth, the possibility of the lost city of Atlantis lying submerged beneath Lake Van. Astonishingly, this idea wasn't as far-fetched as it might seem. The lands surrounding Lake Van were once home to the Urartians, an ancient civilization that thrived in Turkey during the Iron Age, approximately 3,000 years ago. Despite their centuries-long presence in the area, very few remnants of this civilization endure today. While conquest undoubtedly played a part in the disappearance of most Urartian structures, some scholars speculate that the rising waters of Lake Van might have submerged these relics. Locating these structures was no easy task, prompting the team to seek additional assistance. Toss and Salen, a seasoned underwater photographer, assumed the role of leading the expedition's dive team in their quest to unearth the lost Urartian kingdom. With his years of diving expertise and profound knowledge of Lake Van, Salen was unquestionably the team's most suitable candidate for unraveling this long-forgotten historical mystery. However, even as the moment arrived for the team to plunge into the lake's depths, Salen couldn't entirely shake his unease fueled by the legend of the Lake Van Monster. Despite having dived here countless times before, he couldn't help but wonder if this would be the day he came face to fin with the terrifying creature lurking in the depths. His apprehensions seemed to resonate with the entire team as they descended further into the murky waters, where the thought of unknown creatures lurking just a few feet below weighed heavily on their minds. Upon reaching the lake's bottom, Seelin and his team wasted no time and began meticulously searching the sandy depths for any trace of Urartian artifacts. Almost immediately, one of the divers spotted an immense shadow, sending shivers down everyone's spines. Veiled in deep blue silence, the enigmatic shape sat motionless, almost as if it were crafted from stone. Gathering their courage, the diver swam closer, only to discover that it was not a monster but a castle. The towering structure, remarkably well-preserved, boasted intact walls and foundations. While it had rested here for quite some time, the critical question remained, was this castle a genuine relic of the long-forgotten Urartian Empire? As Seelin and his team continued their exploration of the ruins, a diver stumbled upon an illuminating etching on one of the walls, a depiction of a lion. This discovery all but confirmed the castle's Urartian origin, as the civilization had employed such symbols for centuries to establish their kingdom. After capturing photographs of the structure, the divers resurfaced to share their findings with the rest of the team. The researchers were elated by the discovery, but when they learned of the lion symbol, things grew complicated. 
Despite the historical use of the lion motif by the Urartians, certain scholars argued that the symbol appeared more characteristic of the medieval period rather than the ancient Iron Age. If this assertion held true, it would mean that the castle's origins dated back to the Middle Ages rather than the Iron Age. The presence of materials used in the castle's construction, which included a mixture of Urartian and medieval stones, further bolstered this theory, suggesting that kingdoms from the Middle Ages might have repurposed materials from these ancient ruins for their fortifications. Within the archaeological community, a rift emerged over the true origin of the castle beneath Lake Van. In the meantime, historians shifted their focus to a recent discovery made in the United States, a find that promised to be even more extraordinary than the lost Urartian kingdom. Beneath the serene waters off Cape Cod in Massachusetts, Divers stumbled upon a long-hidden secret, concealed for centuries, an astonishing discovery that would undoubtedly pique the interest of any historian. This well-kept secret was none other than the wreckage of the Wida, an enormous ship designed to accommodate 150 men and carry several hundred tons of cargo. It had gone missing off the coast of New England in 1717, and many had believed it to be lost forever. However, in 1984, explorer Barry Clifford had located the Whiteout wreck and had been unearthing artifacts from the site ever since, earning him a reputation as one of history's greatest treasure hunters. Barry had long sought a treasure that would cement his legendary status. He once believed he had discovered the remains of Christopher Columbus' original 1492 voyage, the Santa Maria, but subsequent tests revealed it to be a different vessel. The Wida, however, was an unparalleled find. It had been the flagship of one of history's most renowned pirates, Black Sam Bellamy, known as the Robin Hood of the Sea. Bellamy targeted wealthy merchants and minimized violence. He paid his crew equitably and treated everyone with respect, including Native Americans and former slaves. Furthermore, the Wida had originally served as a slave ship until Bellamy forcibly seized it and freed the captives on board. Bellamy's audacious exploits included the most significant hests in pirate history, amassing an estimated equivalent of $120 million in modern currency throughout his career. These daring escapades elevated Bellamy from a common criminal to a bona fide folk hero. Sadly, his success was short-lived as a massive storm sank the Wida, claiming countless treasures and most of the crew, including Bellamy himself. Centuries later, Clifford and his colleagues had unearthed numerous relics and treasures from the wreck, establishing the Wida Pirate Museum to share Bellamy's incredible story. Despite decades of studying the site, Clifford still believed they had only scratched the surface. Then, during a diving mission in late 2016, everything changed. The explorers stumbled upon a substantial chunk of debris from the Wida, containing numerous artifacts trapped within it. They raised it to dry land for closer examination, discovering a veritable treasure trove with genuine coins and seafaring equipment protruding from the rugged surface. However, there was one unexpected find with it in this motherlode, human bones. Among the discoveries was a femur, not far from what appeared to be Bellamy's pistol. Could this be the remains of the legendary captain himself? To confirm, Clifford enlisted a team of forensic scientists who extracted DNA from the bone and compared it to that of one of Bellamy's descendants in the United Kingdom. The results, however, did not match. While the bone likely belonged to an anonymous crew member, Captain Bellamy remained elusive, slipping through the grasp of authorities once more. The disappointing news deflated Clifford's theory as swiftly as the Wida had met its fate. However, the discovery of the bone presented an opportunity for researchers to gain insights into the lives of typical sailors from that era. Clifford can still take great pride in his ongoing excavation of the Wida. After all, no other famous pirate ship has undergone such meticulous scrutiny. His accomplishments and contributions to history remain beyond reproach. Moreover, the enigmas surrounding the Wida still lurk in the depths of the ocean, and Bellamy's final resting place may yet reserve its one day. All that requires is the right person with the skills and determination to uncover it.